Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Anna from Astro Lady Tarot, and today I am finally doing a Q&A. I am answering your questions that I requested you asked me over on Instagram. My Instagram is always linked below, by the way, in case you're interested. I don't post that much, but mostly is to uh, let you know when there's a new video out there or when I plan to go live. Anyway, this request of mine to ask me some questions for a YouTube video wasn't really up for long, I believe, but I was happy with the amount of questions to put into a video for you, and I thought they were really interesting, so here goes. Sometimes I like sitting in front of a messy background. <laughs> And uh, here is some of my partner's stuff, which I thought was just, I don't know, fun to place the camera in a different angle. What do you think? What do you think of this beautiful rock and roll mess? <laughs> a musician's mess. I appreciate that. Anyway, the first question here is from Benevolent Corvus. I love that name. Why isn't it malevolent? Benevolent? You really that good? Okay. What is your favorite non-greeny copy of the Toth and why? Ah, I have my greeny right here. Oh, you guys know I love this one so much, right? My favorite non-greeny? This is a hard question, actually, already, because you know what? My ugly, small Dutch Toth, it's very pale and very gray and... At the same time, it's oversaturated or it's almost too sharp where all the lines become more grainy instead of this beautiful, soft Lady Frida Harris artwork that we all know and love. Well, I mean, not all, but <laughs> Toth lovers love. That Dutch Toth is the first deck that was a gift from a friend. Just for that, it holds so much meaning. I really like that one mostly because that's the one I travel with. I use it in this way where I'm... it's an experiment basically. It's the one where I try to not be precious about the deck and in order to not be precious about it, to really use it in this more visceral deep way in a sense, I am actively kind of destroying it and you'll see that these regularly available Toth decks these days are really well made because so far none of the cards have torn. Um, it's just they look a little different and used and you guys know I like disheveled decks, right? So um, uh, I'm just quickening that process, you might say. I'm not sure if that's my favorite. It, it would be my favorite other Toth because of the work I do with it. But image-wise, gold box. It's gorgeous. I just wish I had English version or maybe French version. It's a German version. It's okay. Images, though, are beautiful because they were made later on with this weird laser photography that everybody keeps talking about and nobody understands what it is. Anyway, I think that's the answer to that question. A non-greeny favorite toss. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, um, it's just, I'm talking about the two other Toth decks I own. So, I can't answer that question. One of them I use in this, in my opinion, really fun and deep way. It's just such different work when you get to handle your cards in this way, when you're not careful and you're deliberately even destroying it, but it feels like you're putting a part of yourself in the cards. So you're experiencing the deck in a different way. And then the gold box is just so bloody beautiful. So I can't choose. Second question from Joel. Joel. Not a question, although it sounds like a question. It says, not a question, but would love to know how you journal and learn tarot, your perspective. Okay, so I believe I have a few videos up on that, and I will link one of them in the screen. But how you journal and how you learn tarot. So journaling really for me, um, confession, I haven't journaled in at least two weeks. This is because last time I talked about my journal in a YouTube video, 
I was in the process of starting a new journal because I just ended one. It's just all filled up. And actually, I haven't, I have been postponing starting the new one. I haven't been feeling up for it. And I think that's okay. Very busy doing other things. <laughs> um, I'm still reading tarot for other people, for myself. I guess I've just been taken off the pressure where I can, because sometimes it does feel like pressure to me. It feels sometimes where something doesn't actually happen in my life unless I write it down. <laughs> So that's putting on pressure, right? Where it's not very necessary. So uh, yeah, I've been reading tarot without writing things down. And honestly, this little experiment has shown me that by not writing everything down, I just might have more to share with you. Because all of those things where I write down my theories and findings, how I like to say, I now share with you over here or on Patreon and does it's, I'm not trying to say that I don't do that when I actually do journal all the time. I am just saying that it's fresher in my mind. So how I journal is I love to write. I, I still have a paper agenda, diary, what's it called? I hate to put things down digitally when I write things. It's a psychological thing, I'm sure. When I write something down, pen and paper, preferably in a little book that's very organized, in my own way, of course, that's when an appointment or a task really stands and gets its, its importance. Now, when it comes to journaling to learn tarot, which I've that's how I learned tarot, by writing down every single thing. Not just book meanings, I would say I would write down keywords, many, many keywords, but then around that, everything that I associated with the card. So that's a um, hopefully helpful trick. Most of all, though, it's looking at a card and trying to find the message as you're learning tarot, trying to find the meaning of it and what it means to you and just write down everything, everything that comes up, everything that you can possibly think of looking at that card, the feeling that you get. Um, and then it's important also, that's one of the strengths of journaling, to once in a while go back to what you wrote down about the reading or about a single card. That's how you know, was I right? what exactly was wrong about the reading or what didn't come true or however you read cards. That's how we learn because it just shows that Lord of Cruelty over here, the Nine of Swords in the Toth deck, can mean something very specific to you personally. That's experiential knowledge. By journaling about it and being able to read what you wrote a while ago or even just yesterday, you're actually learning from yourself because you're experiencing the card itself according to how you read it. And then you can basically compare or match the meanings. Was your interpretation of the card correct? Or is this other meaning from a book, maybe, that you hadn't considered more accurate? Either way, I think when we journal, especially regarding any sort of spiritual journaling, it's incredibly important to be truthful, to write down the truth. So not just the, the pretty things, but the things that are less appealing, not as pretty, not, you know, all the things that are a part of ourselves, but that we kind of wish we didn't really feel or didn't really think. Writing those things down actually starts this process of understanding where it came from and then not repeating those same patterns, not repeating the same mistakes. It's really, it's what I call shadow work. It's a piece of that. I'd say these days how I learn tarot because we're never done learning is to just use the cards, man, <laughs> and and actually look at the cards also, because there's just a never-ending amount of 
details in them or or new feel or new perspective um, just always be that student okay that's what I think the best way to learn tarot don't ever consider yourself an expert also that word has been tainted for me in the few recent years but put yourself in that position of I'm learning all the time as you change as you enter a new phase in your life however big or small, however important or seemingly unimportant, the cards will start to read differently. You will start to see different things in the cards. You will start recognizing what you've just been through, something you hadn't ever considered before. You will start liking other cards over your previous favorite ones, etc. So the meanings of the cards change. The tarot, I, I see that as a living organism because it's so human and God at the same time. Leanne Aligned asked me, what are your three favorite tarot cards and why? <laughs> I will always, always love the Rider Waite Smith Moon card. It's just such a beautiful composition. It's so easy to, for, for me at least, to fall into. That's this instant astral projection when I look at that card and I've had a sort of a astral projection slash vision with that card. I recognize what Pamela Coleman Smith depicted in the moon card as an actual place that exists somewhere here on another plane. A lot of cosmic mumbo jumbo. <laughs> then I think I can talk about my favorite card in my favorite deck, which is Triumphi de la Luna Paradoxical. My favorite card in that deck is the Strength card. Why? Because I identify with her. She is half woman, half beast. And I think that is the perfect depiction of how shadowy that card actually is. I say the cards that show most shadow work, since I don't know, I'm talking about that, in the tarot, most of the time for me would be temperance, because we're trying to make a whole out of our fragmented self, and strength, because we're trying to bring together, you know, the high and the low in a sense. And we realize that high ain't all that high and low isn't all bad. So it's very empowering at the same time and still very loving. It's fierce and soft all at the same time. and. Just that Patrick Valenza depiction is, is just my favorite, my favorite. Then third card, third favorite card, are you kidding me? This is way too hard. I love the Toth Queen of Discs. She's absolutely gorgeous. But then I also love Seven of Wands in any deck because I've had some personal experiences with that. Queen of Swords is always badass. I don't know what to tell you. I just don't know what to tell you. Okay, maybe, maybe Six of Cups, because that is the sweetest card in the deck. Or Queen of Wands, because he, she is most fierce and bold. <laughs> I can't choose a third one. Okay, I know my three favorite cards. The two blank cards and the title card. MZMC0101 asked, your top five favorite decks. I've made a top five video few years ago and I'm planning to do a new one, an update. So I don't know in which order these videos will go up because at this point I'm just filming, filming all I can and enjoying it by the way. But if the video is already out it will be linked here and if not it will probably be the next video. Maybe it will be the next video so that I can link the old one. That would be fun, a comparison because it has changed. Disclaimer, it has changed. Same person asked, how did you get into tarot? Okay, how I actually got into tarot is, I don't know time, it's just like numbers to me, I can't make sense of it. A X amount of years ago, pretty sure it's more than five years ago at this point, yeah, more than five years ago, I woke up in the morning from a dream. First thought popped into my head was that old Rider Waite Smith tarot deck that was in my mom's house. And all I wanted was to know how to read it, to understand what those cards mean without using a book. 
I just had to. It was this urge. I don't know where it came from. I don't know what I had dreamt. This urge to understand the meaning of these cards, knowing it was a magical spiritual tool, not knowing anything about shadow work or, you know, what the cards could be, what it actually is to read tarot or how I read it now and how much it has unlocked and even changed my life. I am actually a professional tarot reader now. It's insane. <laughs> so that was the major revival. I made sure to visit my mom soon after, found that deck and started studying like crazy. Basically, I haven't stopped. Now, before that, of course, at some point, I had to have bought that deck. I don't know. I was 15 or 16. I don't, I don't know at what age. All I knew is I went to this store. I think it was just a bookstore. I don't even know. I don't remember. I actually don't remember picking up that deck. And I'm pretty sure it was just Rider Waite Smith Yellow Box, maybe a small toss deck, definitely the classic Marseille, and just... Of course, Rider right Waite Smith was the one that looked like the tarot cards to me because we are more exposed to those images, even if we don't read tarot, I think. At that time, I had acquired the deck because I was into magical practitioner intention things. I was into all of that stuff. That also found a revival. You know, honestly, I... I quit all of that because I thought life is too busy. Life is asking way too much of me now, which of course makes sense, you know, 15, 18, and then your 20s, finding tarot late 20s absolutely made sense for me. That's the time where I stopped messing around almost. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I should say that, but, and really made some big life changes. I changed my career path, knew what I wanted, uh, and I changed things because they were good for me. It was a, a spiritual awakening that actually meant finally taking care of myself and my needs, even though it was hard for me to say goodbye to being a performing dancer, for instance. And all of this, going even further back in time, started in my during my childhood, because I remember I was 10 years old, but it was already present before that. I was actually pretend reading tarot cards, which were actually these carte napoletane in the attic of our old home. I was reading tarot for myself. I was making up meanings. I remember writing it down on a A4 white paper with this light blue felt tip pen. And I was reading for myself. I was also reading for my stuffed animals. It was a great time. Maybe the best tarot readings I've ever done. <laughs> so yeah, it stems from a long time ago, but I can honestly say it only started to become what it's now, late 20s. Last question, are you using Oracle decks? Yes, I am, but my first love will always be tarot. I just love that system and I love history and the ancient, you know, all the things that we can decipher. I grew up in the 90s after all, I was into ancient Egypt, all of that, it it definitely <laughs> triggered my love for the occult. Um, and I just have Toth deck here, but you know, as you can hear, I, I love different systems and different decks as well. But you're asking oracle decks, right? So uh, I think my two favorite oracle decks, because honestly I haven't used them in a while at this point, are Secret Dakini Oracle. I have the version that is renamed Tantric Dikini Oracle. Uh, it's insane. I love it. And another insane Oracle deck is Morgan's Tarot. Misnamed. Because it says Tarot, but it's an Oracle deck. And it's my summer Oracle deck. I've discovered last year or two years ago. Because, again, I don't know time. And I love that because it, like Tantric Dikini, makes me think outside of the box, very much. Makes me contemplate things I didn't know I needed to think about. <laughs> Which really, isn't that the perfect reason to even use Oracle? And Tarot, actually. We might 
ask questions and want an answer, right? But how cool is just the contemplating for contemplating's sake? Oh yeah, I also have Living Altar Oracle, which is amazing, but still unusable in different ways at this point. I don't know. I still hang on to it because it's a beautiful thing. Lately, it just hasn't been working the way I want it to. I ha it hasn't been doing what I acquired it for. But I, I think that's okay. And I think, am I right in saying this? Those are my three Oracle decks. But if you want to know of a... <laughs> I called it a failed experiment. A comment section was all very gracious and said that uh, it was helpful nonetheless. I will link this other video where I attempt to use tarot as oracle. So even though from my perspective it didn't really work, I still somewhere believe that you can actually use any tarot deck as oracle. So if you're interested in, you know, just trying things out with your cards, you can check that one out. I think that was it. Thank you so much again for entering your questions. I hope this was helpful for people, that there were some tips in there, that it was everything you expected, or maybe even more. And I think that's all. Thanks so much for being here. I'll see you all next weekend. Have a good weekend. Bye.